Hello and welcome to the Sparger Yarn Crafts channel. My name is Will Sparger. I am your host. Today is part four of this week's podcast, which is the life updates. So if you were mainly here for just the crafting portion of my podcasts and you're not really interested in anything from my personal life, I take no offense. You may go about and seek your next YouTube video. Uh, but if you were here for my life updates and like to stay updated, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Stephanie Truesdell, who is one of the uh, people who buys from my dyeing company a lot. She has recently moved to Vegas, and I got to meet her and her husband. They are wonderfully amazing people, and it was so good to meet her. And uh, that that's just that's really cool, and I can't wait to uh, do more knitting and yarny related things with the people that I meet. So welcome to Vegas, Stephanie. I hope you don't hate the heat too much. <laughs> like I am right now sweating in this chair. <laughs> so, um, I am at almost 120 days sober, which is incredible. I'm really excited about that. Um, somebody did reach out to me. Uh, I believe her name is Wendy and told me that the nightmares I was having is just part of the withdrawals and it's actually a really good thing and that is extremely reassuring. Luckily, after about 90 days, those nightmares kind of died down. So that was, that's really good. I, I don't think I've had one in a while. Um, but thank you, Wendy, for reassuring me that I'm not going crazy. Uh, so that was, that was good. That was good information. But yeah, uh, almost 120 days. It'll be 120 on the 23rd of this month. So that's exciting. That's a big deal. And I don't miss it. I thought I would miss it, but I don't. And that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think that's a, a good step in the right direction towards kind of my goals and how I'd like to proceed in the future. So yeah. Um, with that, I did have a friend who had recently been in rehab, also for alcoholism, and unfortunately he did relapse, um, and so we've been, uh, his friends and I, you know, we're all his friends, we, we've been struggling with that and trying to do our best to support him. Um, he did reach out after a while. When after we knew he had relapsed, and he said, I "I'm really sorry for the late responses. I just uh, things haven't been great." And I was like, "Stop apologizing. Just are you okay? Uh, just trying to let him know. Like, I understand you're struggling, and as difficult as it can be to continue supporting someone who just continues to relapse, I think it's important that I continue to show support because so many people eventually get tired of watching someone destroy themselves and it hurts and it's painful and this last time that this friend relapsed he said some extremely nasty things to me and my heart still hurts a little bit from the things he said to me because they he went right to the heart. Uh, and he said some very upsetting things about things that I'm insecure about. And afterwards, and he reached out and apologized, I said, look, I appreciate the apology and I do forgive you, but this hurts. This really hurt. And I don't, it doesn't matter what kind of pain you're in or what caused you to feel like you needed to drink again. You don't have any right to treat me that way. I'm not your punching bag. If you're upset at someone else, you don't get to take that out on me. I don't care what state you're in. I do forgive you and I do appreciate the apology, but this is going to take some time to heal. You said some awful things to me. And I have stood by that. I have uh, one thing that I think is really important that I've been trying to do is that if somebody harms me in any sort of way that they need to apologize for, I do not say it's okay. Because it's okay is an affirmation that what they did is acceptable and that if it happens again, I'm just gonna say it's okay again. And that's not the case. That is not the case, especially in this instance. It is not okay. What you did to me is not okay. I do understand and appreciate that you are sorry for what you did. And I do forgive you because I know you have a good heart but it is not okay. 
And so that's, I think that's a, a lesson we can take into a lot of aspects of our lives is that if somebody owes you an apology and they apologize, do not say it's okay. Say, thank you, I forgive you, but do not say it's okay. Um, I think that's something we can all work on trying to do as we interact with people, especially in times like these when tensions can get really high very quickly. So, um, with that being said, uh, <laughs> my roommates will be moving in October, and I, I knew Delilah's parents would be leaving. I didn't know until a couple weeks ago that Delilah would also be leaving, and no, I knew she'd be leaving eventually. We just didn't really know when. And she just kind of said, if I don't go now, I'll never leave. And I understand. And so I'm getting to spend my last couple months with them before they move to Texas. And I already have uh, somebody to move in. It's my friend Isaac. Um, Isaac is a really good friend of mine. And he's also my realtor. Uh, more on that. But uh, Isaac is a good friend, and he needs a new place. He's currently living... He has a camping trailer, like a nice one that gets pulled by a Ford 350. Um, but he lives in that in our RV resort here in Vegas. And I was like, would you like to move into the house? And we kind of ran the numbers. It's going to cost exactly the same for him. And he'll have, actually, a house instead of something else. Um, so yeah, we're going to give that a go when they move out, he'll move in. And so that's going to be really interesting. Um, with him being a realtor, we've actually, uh, I've considered, um, the financial accessibility of becoming a homeowner instead of a renter. And my buying power kind of sits at prefab or manufactured homes or duplexes, which is fine. Nice starter home, but I'm kind of thinking like if I'm eventually going to be living on my own, it, it would be nice to have a place that's, you know, mine instead of something where if something goes wrong, I have to contact someone else, which does have its benefits, especially if it's expensive, it's not really on me. But, you know, I kind of like the idea of taking care of things that are my problem and just dealing with it and not having to deal with anyone else. So I don't, we're toying with the idea. We're kind of playing around with numbers, thinking about lenders and uh, looking at the areas in town where I want to live uh, that are offering kind of the things that I could afford with my budget. So uh, it's just, it's a fun little thing to kind of think about and to start. It, it's a goal to set. It's a place to put money so that, you know, when that time comes, I've got it. It's it's not anything that's going to be soon or drastic, but it is something that I would like to start considering, seeing as how I'm almost 30. Wow, there are a lot of vehicle sounds going on outside. Uh, anyway, that's kind of it for my life updates. There's not really a whole lot going on otherwise. Everything's kind of great. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining me this week, and I will see you all again very soon here on the Sparky Yarncrafts channel. Thank you. Bye.